Arizona State is back in the home dugout, the home team. And Michigan trying to use the momentum to win twice today, to knock out ASU in the postseason for the second year in a row. They beat them last year in Oklahoma City at the World Series. And the winner of this game faces Florida State in Tallahassee in the Super Regionals next weekend. Those will get underway on Thursday and run throughout the weekend for you on the ESPN networks. So for the fourth time in three days here in Tempe, senior Dallas Escobedo will get the start for ASU. She's two and one coming off of the loss earlier today against Michigan. Well, at this point, Beth, it's really just a chess match. These Michigan hitters have seen her so frequently. They're able to adjust to a lot of her pitches. She's still throwing in the upper 60s, going to that rise ball, but it's the long ball that she's been susceptible to. That's what Blanchard hit, Sierra Romero out of the park, and that's how they got a bulk of their runs. In the starting lineup they will be facing, brought to you by Capital One with Lindsey Doyle and Nicole Sappingfield at the top. Then it's Romero and Blanchard. Romero hit the two-run home run in the first inning, and then in the third inning, she was walked, and coming up right behind her, Blanchard hit a two-run home run. As Michigan put up a four spot without ever having a base runner in scoring position in the game, and held on for the 4-3 win. So far, just the one unseeded team has advanced. Nebraska out of the Big Ten. They will be uh, taking on Alabama after they won twice today in Missouri. And now Michigan trying to match that. Otherwise, it's been a lot of chalk so far on this regional weekend. And it's the two senior outfielders that will try and get the ball rolling with Doyle leading things off. The shadows here at Farrington Stadium now creeping across that third baseline and onto the field. And here we go. Winner to Tallahassee, loser goes home. And Doyle with the lead off single. That's been Michigan's plan from the get-go today is to be aggressive, swinging at first pitch, looking for the strikes that Dallas provides early in the counts. When she gets ahead, that's when you see her rise ball. Her lethal rise ball at times. And has been so good with that over the course of her career. 115 career wins for Escobedo. And Sappingfield, she singled in the first and scored on the Romero home run in the first game today. Both she and Sierra Romero woke up early this morning feeling sick. And both of them responded to the challenge in the opener. And now two on with nobody out for Sierra Romero earlier tonight. Here in Tempe, this happened. Well, she sat on an inside pitch from Dallas Escobedo, barely clearing the left field wall. Romero, Coach Carol Hutchins saying is about 50%. If that's her 50%. That's why she's in this lineup, regardless if she's sick or not. Romero, the 500 hitter, 18 home runs, 70 runs batted in. One of the best seasons in Big Ten history for the two-time Conference Player of the Year. Escobedo missed that one up 2-0. There are 10 finalists for National Player of the Year honors. Both Romero and Escobedo are on that list. It will be pared down to just three players next Thursday, just prior to the Super Regionals, and then the National Player of the Year will be announced at the Women's College World Series, which gets underway May 29th. Carol Hutchins, a national champion as a player and as a coach, she's in the Hall of Fame. In her 30th season now at Michigan. <laughs> it's 
Started out there as an assistant in 1983 and then took over as the head coach in 1985. Two one to Romero. Escobedo got it by her. Two and two. Escobedo just given a good mix to Romero before we'd seen them just stick with one side of the plate, whether that was inside or outside, they stayed there. And now they're going in and out, left to right instead of just one side. This is the sixth game that these two have seen each other over the course of their careers. Romero is three for 12 against Dallas with a couple of home runs and five runs batted in. The home run earlier today, she also had a run scoring single, but Escobedo got the win on Saturday afternoon. And of course, fresh in both of these teams' minds, their World Series meeting last year when Romero hit a two-run home run off of Dallas to eliminate Arizona State. why it's such a chess match, because for every time they beat Romero, she'll move and make an adjustment, then Dallas changes, and they're just both constantly evolving. Great pitcher and a phenomenal hitter. And the strikeout for Escobedo. Breaking ball got her, one down. How did they do it? Dallas Escobedo started away, she came back up and in, then they worked her away for a couple pitches. Swinging and missing, away on the curve, a curveball again for a foul ball, and then the strikeout ended up with another curveball up and away to Romero. Just the 14th strikeout of the season for Sierra, and Dallas has gotten her three of those times. It's been a long weekend for Escobedo with the 282 pitches in 18 innings of work. This is the maturity of Dallas Escobedo. If you take a freshman or a sophomore, or even some seniors from other teams, her to give up the first two hits of this ball game and then to settle in against the two home run hitters that just hit those an hour ago, strike one out and come right and attack Caitlin Blanchard. You almost get the sense that <laughs> Dallas is feeling a bit miff that she's got to throw again and didn't take care of it earlier. Fouls it back out of play. <laughs> one, two to Blanchard. That one fouls went off. Singles for Doyle and Sappenfield, then the strikeout of Romero. Escobedo took a bit off that, and Blanchard out to left field, and the bases are loaded for the Maze and Blue. Three hits and four batters here in the first. Michigan urging on CeeLo, Sierra Lawrence, the sophomore from Georgia. Well, it was a changeup that Escobedo, she rarely throws this pitch. And she leaves it up in the zone. Blanchard just doing a nice job of waiting on it. Lawrence has a three-run home run from Friday night against San Diego State. Chases the rise ball, 0-1.
yesterday, Michigan had three hits in the first inning. They scored a run, and then that was all they got against Dallas. And a 4-1 ASU win. When you think about the runners on base, Lindsey Doyle at third, Sappingfield at second, Blanchard at first. A lot of speed at third and second, so a lot of ways to score these two runners. A medium fly ball hit to the outfield, a ground ball that makes a middle infield go to the left or the right. So for Sierra Lawrence right now, her game plan should be really just to put the ball in play, not try to hit it out. See how deep the middle infield is, especially with runners with bases loaded. Inside of Lawrence, she turned away from it. And it skirted by. Sierra is six for 13 on the season with the bases loaded. going on tonight around the country. Spots still to fill. Call strike three. Second strikeout for Escobedo. It's a huge strikeout for Arizona State. The screwball riding in the inside. And Amber Freeman does a phenomenal job of framing this pitch. It looked like it came inside almost a ball, but Freeman framing it nicely for Escobedo for the strikeout. So now with two outs, the bases are loaded still for Hasselback. Taylor, the DP. Pitches. She's hitting her spots perfectly. Her velocity, I'd say, has even kicked up a notch or two from the previous game. She does not want her career to end on this field. Use that one high, two and one. Doyle, Sappingfield, and Blanchard with singles here in the first. Escobedo countering with strikeouts of Romero and Lawrence. <laughs> Hoping to get the call on deck is Lauren Sweet. Michigan scores in the first inning, and they take the lead, 1-0. Here's Lauren Sweet. Six home runs, 30 runs batted in this year. And this, the 300th pitch of the weekend from Escobedo. One game Friday, one game yesterday, and now starting her second game today. One, 
two now to sweep. Here comes the one two. Missed a high two and two. The Dallas Escobedo wants called only because it's up and it's out. It's it's a pitch that if she can get called, very tough for these batters to hit. If you look at the location, it is a ball. It's almost in the other batter's box. Freeman trying to pull that back in. If she gets that called though. Lauren Sweet, she's in trouble. I mean, she's in trouble with the strikeout, but also in future at bats. That's a almost unhittable pitch. Already 31 pitches here in the first from Escobedo. Full count with the bases loaded and sweep fouls it on. And Escobedo really utilizing that screwball and her low rise early in this game. Walked in as Sappingfield scores. Three singles and two base on balls, and it's 2 nothing Michigan. And Nicholson out to talk with Escobedo. Very uncharacteristic of Dallas Escobedo with the walks. That's probably the biggest goal of hers this season. She's done a tremendous job of eliminating those walks. We've seen her thus far, this regional, incredibly efficient, getting ahead of counts. Of course, this is the second game of the day for her. She, third she, time facing this lineup in two days. She has a six to one strikeout to walk ratio on the season. And there's Mackenzie Popescu, who was a 20 game winner during the regular season. Had a couple of rough outings against Oregon and UCLA at the end of the year. And it has been all Escobedo in the postseason. Papaskew has not warmed up today. And this is the eighth batter to the plate, Lindsay Montemarano. Papaskew suffering a hand injury last weekend, which has taken her out of the mix. She can still throw, but it's her right hand that injury came to. Michigan scored two in the first inning earlier today off of Arizona State. They went on to win it four to three. They score two more here in the if necessary game. More out there for Mana Morano. Lindsay went 0 for two with the strikeout earlier today against Escobedo and struck out twice against Dallas in their first meeting of the regional. Breaking ball away. Did check her swing, two and two. A couple of singles, then the strikeout. A single for Blanchard to load the bases. Another Escobedo strikeout, and now back-to-back -back walks to get two runs across. Montemarano out to center field. Johnson initially coming in and now backing up to make the catch. Michigan leaves them loaded, but they walk two across, and they are up in this elimination game. Tempe Town Lake, 
And then off in the distance there, Sun Devil Stadium. We are uh, just across the street from that. The region final, Michigan leading Arizona State two to nothing as we move to the bottom of the first. And it's Haley Wagner who picked up the win earlier today against ASU to force this if necessary game. She's 23 and four on the season. She also took a loss yesterday to ASU and trying to secure a spot in the Super Regionals for the Wolverines. On what Haley Wagner is going to do, she's not going to be a strikeout pitcher. She's going to pitch to contact with that lefty curveball, and a lot of the outs that she will get will put pressure on the left side of this defense that was very strong, whether it's a fly ball or a ground ball, out, and that helps her with her confidence. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. And for Arizona State, Cheyenne Coyle had a home run earlier today, but as a threesome, those two, three, and four hitters of Coyle, Freeman, and Steele not having the kind of postseason that they have been accustomed to over the course of their career. You see their numbers for the season, all fantastic. They're 300 and 400 hitters. But they have struggled to match those numbers so far here in the regional. And Alex Johnson will lead things off the senior center fielder. And all of a sudden, this group of seniors that won a national championship as freshmen and were fully joyed to make another deep run in the NCAA tournament face a must win here at home. And Johnson tries to lay it down. Montemarino's got her one out. With one out, Cheyenne Coyle. She had a two-run home run off of Megan Betza, the starter earlier today. And that quickly chased her, and Wagner came on in relief. But that's been the, the lone bright spot. Otherwise, those two, three, and four hitters, just three for 24 so far in this Tempe Regional. And that is a veteran group with the senior and the pair of juniors. Take you back to earlier this afternoon. This is against the starter, Betza, of last game. She turned on a low inside pitch off the camera in left field. Since then, she saw a lot of away pitches from Wagner, who came in in relief. Now they come back inside to her. But Coyle, Coyle's approach to Wagner has been to be off the plate be able to get that barrel out on the curveball. 2-1 and the off speed in for a strike. And Beth, that pitch right there for Haley Wagner, especially game two, third time that she has faced this lineup, is going to be her changeup. If she can throw that for a strike this game, they have a really good chance of beating Arizona State. Full count to Coyle. Cheyenne has played at the Women's College World Series with two different teams, last year with ASU and prior to that at the University of Florida before she transferred. Joining the likes of Julie Smith and Lovey Jung and Krista Williams, Rhonda Ravel, some of the stars of years gone by that played in two different uniforms at the World Series. And she draws the walk. Chance now for Amber Freeman to make something happen. When I circle one batter in this lineup, what this team needs to get to Super Regionals, to get to the World Series, it's Amber Freeman. She is clearly the best hitter, hitting over 400, and as you've mentioned, Beth, only one for eight with two walks in this re regional. Wagner comes in with the off-speed 0-1. Wagner has been 
very stingy with the free passes. That's just the second walk in 13 innings against Arizona State here. That's a fair ball. Mar Morano gets Freeman two down, Coyle over into scoring position now for Haley Steele. Super Regional Field is almost full. This is one of four games going on around the country. Former Arizona State head coach Clint Myers now at Auburn. They had the lead late and they have lost it. Minnesota, three run home run to take the lead in the sixth inning. Down in Tucson, Arizona is up 5-0 on LSU. Trying to earn a trip to Louisiana to face Lafayette next weekend. And Georgia looks like they are going to force an if necessary game with NC State. They're up 7-1 in Athens. Steele is the junior from Poway, California, one of their best hitters with a runner in scoring position. And she's got Coyle out there on second. The shadow is beginning to creep over the field. The whole left side of the field in shadow, the whole right side of the field in the sun. That makes it very difficult to read the ball when you're on the right side of the field because it's coming from dark to light. Plus, you're looking right into the sun. Steele. That'll drop in front of Doyle. They will hold the runner at third. The throw cut by Blanchard. And runners on the corners now with two out as Steele Tries to break out of her funk. And Haley has her first hit of the regional. Talk about Wagner being able to utilize that changeup. That last hit was a changeup that she hung high. A very key pitch for her this game. She's going to need to use it, but she's also going to need to keep it low. Not hanging. 250th pitch of the weekend for Wagner, and uh, Carol Hutchins didn't like something right there. She is quickly up out of the dugout. Have a first and third situation here with uh, Steele with some speed at first. And how you handle that in softball, that's a unique situation that you don't find in baseball. You can send that runner down to second base and get a couple into scoring position. And if you draw the throw, it's only 60 feet for the runner on third to try to make the dash home. If I were Michigan, I would go after Steele at second because there are two outs. And Coyle is not a huge threat for speed on third base. Sweet does have a good arm behind the dish. The 1-0 from Wagner. Steele stays. Third ball, two and one. That's why you see the left side of this field get so much action when Haley Wagner is throwing because most of her pitches, I'd say around 70 to 80% of her pitches are going to be the right side of that plate. A lot of ground balls and fly balls to the left side. Slow roller, Romero to second in the bubble and the run will score. She almost would have been better served to just step on the bag herself. And the muffed exchange. 
cost them. That's exactly it. You see her field it cleanly. She should have just taken it herself. So close. Not a bad toss, but because of the distance, Ramirez is just unable to hold on to it. A lot of times when you're only a couple feet away and your momentum and everything is coming at you for a second baseman, she doesn't know if she's going to take it herself or if the ball's coming at her. Let's see if that opens the door here for Bethany Kemp to keep it going. The error is charged to Ramirez, the second baseman. Camp Montemarano's got it. Side retired, but the miscue gets ASU on the board. 2-1 Michigan, one complete in an elimination game in the region final. Two to one, Michigan with the lead over Arizona State. The winner of this uh, game advances to the Super Regionals in a date with Florida State down in Tallahassee. Neither of these teams uh, face the Seminoles during the regular season. Beth Mowens along with Olympic gold medalist Jessica Mendoza. When we uh, look back on the career of Dallas Escobedo with the national championship, she's got over 100 wins. She's always been so dependable, but a bit of a struggle here early on for her against Michigan. Well, you got to think about it. She's thrown over 300 pitches, a majority of those pitches coming to this Michigan offense, and so they are making those adjustments. She isn't as sharp as she normally is. And you think back to the first inning, she gave up those first two singles to Doyle, then to Sappingfield, then the single to Blanchard, and then it looked like she was trying to be too picky, just missing her spots. There were two walks that scored the two runs. She says, hey, that's my bad. Uncharacteristic of Escobedo, but it's tough when a pitcher has to face the same lineup three times in two days. The 21 strikeouts in 19 innings of work, seven walks and six earned runs. She's thrown 310 pitches. This is one of six, if necessary, games that have been forced today. Georgia's looking like they're gonna make it number seven. They lead late. Minnesota is trying to finish off Auburn. The winner of that series will head up to Eugene to face Oregon. And LSU has made it tight. 5-3 now in the third inning. The winner of that one will head to Louisiana. We already know Tennessee at Oklahoma, Washington at Florida, Kentucky at UCLA, and Nebraska at Alabama. Super Regionals will start on Thursday. And those are best two out of three. Nine and then the top of the order here for Michigan. Scored with a couple of singles and a couple of walks in that first inning off of Dallas. I think the biggest thing with Dallas Escobedo at this point is the fact that she doesn't have an effective changeup. She's thrown it a couple times once it got hit. That was the single to Blanchard. And if she could, throwing 68, 69 miles per hour, what Michigan is able to do is get on time with her. She's going to provide so much of that power, but if she could consistently mix in that changeup or anything off speed, guaranteed Michigan would be out in front. Huh. Two and two now to Ramirez. Abby was one for two off of Escobedo earlier today. She's been solid down at the bottom of that order for them. Slow roller right back to Escobedo and he can't handle it. Base runner for the top of the order. See the slap come right back to Escobedo. She just doesn't get her feet under. The ball bounces up on her. I should say off of her. That's a tough play for a pitcher to give it a hit. Lindsey Doyle singled and scored in the first, laying it down. They'll put the pressure on Dallas. Fires to first, got her. It's as good as a sacrifice, Ramirez to second. Throw over to first base. Doesn't look like Gerard got to the bag at all. 
I think was trying to argue that it was defensive obstruction to no avail. One down with a runner in scoring position for Sappingfield. She singled and scored in the first. A senior on the Michigan side fighting to play another day. Has been a starter in all four of her years in Ann Arbor. Sierra Romero on deck. Escobedo got her the first time with a strikeout. After Romero got a leg up earlier today with a two run home run. Field and Romero both able to respond from the illness they had early this morning, unable to keep anything down. Sapping Field pops it up. So here comes Romero with a runner in scoring position, but also with first base open. And we talked about the home run earlier tonight. Look at the difference for Dallas. When allowing a home run, she's 56 and 24. When she does not give up a home run in her career, 59 and one. Including a win over Michigan yesterday. And that one loss come in her freshman year. So you think about how successful she is when she does not allow a home run. Of course, today the two runs coming on two walks. But that is usually her Achilles heel is the, the long ball. No one misses high. Congratulations to another Big Ten school, Minnesota, and your old buddy from Stanford, uh, their head coach, Jessica Allister. Minnesota has advanced. They have knocked out Clint Myers, Auburn Tigers. And they will be out of Oregon in the Supers. Now there are just three spots remaining. NC State, Georgia, Arizona, LSU, and this one. And here's the one, two to Romero. Rise ball up. I think this is a situation where they obviously don't want to give Romero anything good to hit. They happen to walk her. It's not going to hurt anything in their mind. They will chip at the strike zone, but just barely on the outside. Fouls one off. After she hit the home run in game one earlier today, she walked her next time up, and Caitlin Blanchard went deep. What are the coaches always telling us? To win in the postseason, you need pitching, defense, and timely hitting. And for Sam Mackin, some timely hitting for Minnesota. And they advance. They are becoming one of the feel-good stories of the season. They beat this Michigan team with a walk-off in the Big Ten Tournament Championship game. And that probably got them a host and forced Michigan to come out here on the road in Tempe. And the Wolverines may not make that matter. They have the 2-1 lead. It is win or go home. Chelsea Gonzalez, 7, 8, and 9 here in the bottom of the second. Oh. 
Gonzalez, hey, if you're going to get three hits and hit 333, you might as well send them all out and just trot around the bases. That's what they told the rookie. They said, all right, Ruck, look, listen, you're a freshman. That's how it works in the postseason. Go big or go home. <laughs> They're saying, all right. He's doing what I'm told. Got a lot of breakout stars having terrific super regionals. Haley Decker for Nebraska. Four home runs today as they won twice against Missouri. Lauren Hager had a nice series for Florida. I think she had three home runs. Jaden Spencer was terrific for Alabama. Annie Aldretti, three home runs for Tennessee. Allie Aguilar for Washington. She had a grand slam in the regional. Right back at Wagner, knocks it down. One out. Congratulations, by the way, to Heather Char, her 400th win. And look out for the defending national champs, Oklahoma. Winners of 30 of their last 32. Lauren Chamberlain playing through her injury, hit a couple of home runs in the regional. She now has 70 in her career, 20 behind the all-time record of Stacy Newman. And the junior's got another year to go. We were talking to him the other day. Have you ever had this kind of talent and this kind of opportunity? And he said, you know, we had some great times, some good teams at Ball State. But certainly when you've got four All-Americans in your lineup, eight of nine starters are back from a World Series team. He says, we, we do things a little differently, but we've really taken a lot of feedback from the players, especially Dallas Escobedo on how we want to operate. Lawrence back to the wall, makes the catch. Says what he has really liked about Escobedo is her maturity and her work ethic. She knows what it takes to win big games. And he says when she speaks, it matters in the locker room. So when she comes to me with something, it's important for the team that we figure it out and we get things headed in the right direction. And that's what a true leader is. It doesn't necessarily have to be the rah-rah, gonna get in your face, cheer loud. It's usually someone that is so respected that when they do speak, people listen. Dallas has always been composed and quiet, but very smart and knows the game. She has pitched almost a whole nother season just in the NCAA tournament over the course of her career. She's 19 and four in the tournament. And that includes that freshman campaign where she went 10 and 0 and won the national championship. The first freshman to do it in 20 years. And now trying to bookend it. Has talked about trying to go out the way she came in. Two and two to witness here, the number nine hitter. Of course, the counter to that is Michigan. A rare opportunity for them to be an underdog coming out here. They've embraced that mentality. Team that's been to the Women's College World Series 10 times. And a called strike three gets Wigness. We have played two, and it is 2 1 Michigan. Trying to get to Tallahassee in the Supers. Haley Wagner, the curveball strikeout. Kelsey. Two to one, Michigan with the lead over Arizona State as we move to the top of the third. 
Wolverines have beaten the Sun Devils once today to force this if necessary game. And all the runs coming in the first inning. Here's the pick you up moment of the game. Brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. A few hits and then a couple of walks to get two runs across. And then the miscue at second base allowing the Sun Devil run to come in. Two to one, Escobedo and Haley Wagner squaring off for the third time in two days. Michigan eliminated ASU from the tournament last year at the Women's College World Series. Can they do it again? is one of three games still going on, three spots to fill. NC State Georgia, Arizona LSU. And Arizona has gone up on a Kelsey Rodriguez home run 7-3 over LSU. Georgia beating NC State right now. Deep and short, Coyle's got it. Blanchard is retired. ESPN News coverage of college baseball comes your way next Saturday night. We have the West Coast Conference Championship 10 Eastern on ESPNU. ESPNU's college baseball. We start to wind down the regular season. That road to Omaha is coming up quickly. Sierra Lawrence struck out her first time up. line you're hearing is coming from deep in the Michigan dugout. Inside of Lawrence. Probably the biggest difference between softball and baseball is the creativity of cheering. It starts at five years old and doesn't end in the college. <laughs> Lawrence laying it down and laying it out. Took a while for Gerard to get over to the bag at first, and Michigan has a base runner with one out. Tell you what, Haley Steele just does a phenomenal job getting this throwing off her front foot. She needs Gerard to pick her up right there. As you said, Beth just doesn't get there in time. Look where this throw is. Gerard gets there. Again, a tough play. They give it a hit for Lawrence. Haley Steele showing off a little the glove work in that play. Taylor Hasselback walked in a run in the first. Nice catch off of the uh, deflection by the fan on the foul ball. I'll tell you what, between Escobedo and Wagner, there's been, I'd say, 50, 60 foul balls that have been <laughs> placed into the stands. Ryan's ball is high, one and one. It's always a sign of good pitchers, because obviously if the pitcher's not so good, you're hitting in a player out of the park. But a lot of foul balls, because a lot of these hitters are trying to just foul off what they don't want to get what they do want. And sometimes in the case of Escobedo, she'll just blow by a hitter and they're late. <laughs> as was the case of that last pitch. The velocity can get up there around 70 miles an hour. One of the stronger flamethrowers in the country. Of course, Carol Hutchins telling her team before the game, she's one of the best motivators probably in the game, saying, you know, Dallas could be, I don't know if you guys noticed, but she's not throwing as hard as she has been. And I don't know if she was making that up or just trying to <laughs> get her team to believe, look, she's not as good. And even if, when you do face her multiple times, it does slow down, the game slows down. And the punch out of Hasselbeck, two down. 
Third strikeout for Dallas. The last two have been looking. Escobita throwing a screwball a few inches off the plate. Freeman, tell you what, behind every great pitcher is a great catcher, and Freeman's getting her money's worth. A couple of those strikeouts, doing a good job of framing it for the umpire. On the run out to right field, and that will drop the base hit for Sweet. And Lawrence motoring around to third. And a runner in scoring position for the youngster, Mana Morano. Perhaps. As Hutch talks to Bonnie Thole about maybe a pinch runner or a pinch hitter here or what they're going to do in the first and third situation. Michigan will go to the bench here to make a move. As Mana Morano heads back to the dugout. Let's see who picks up the bat. It's going to be Kelly Christner. Coming on to pinch hit. Christner's a 301 hitter. Kristner will try and pick up Lawrence here to add to the lead. to center, Johnson looking like she's got room and makes the catch. Couple left on base after a couple of hits. It's still 2-1 Michigan. We are here at the Tempe Regional. Winner of this one moves on to Tallahassee and a date with Florida State next weekend. We have these other matchups all set. Oregon, Minnesota and Washington, Florida. Those will be in Eugene and in Gainesville. And Baylor, well, if Georgia wins, they hit the road. If NC State wins, then the uh, Wolfpack will head to Waco. Super Regional coverage begins on Thursday. After next weekend, we will have eight teams headed to the Women's College World Series, which gets underway May 29th. It's the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Haley Wagner back to work here in the bottom of the third with a 2-1 lead. And this may be a big moment for the Sun Devils with the top of the order coming around to get another look. We saw Johnson go to the drag bunch. She laid down a beautiful one, but Monta Morano at third base was all over it. So I imagine Johnson is going to strictly hit away now. Johnson.
Johnson connects and ties it up. Ninth of the year for Alex, and we're even at two all. Alex Johnson takes a curveball low and away. Just uses her hands, her barrel through the ball. Go down, goes down and get it. This one clearly out. Her last at bat, last game, just missing a Haley Wagner curveball. And this one she gets all of. That'll bring up Cheyenne Coyle, who hit a home run earlier tonight. And the first meeting between these two. Earlier in this game, she walked and scored in the first on the air out right at second base. Alex Johnson, after struggling to close out the regular season, has come on strong here in the regional as Montemarano tracks it down one out. Talk about a hitter that needs to break through. You mentioned Johnson getting hot. Coyle, we saw the home run last game. But Freeman is one for nine. Blanchard will run out of room. And what Amber would love to blog about would be a big hit right here. There are our bloggers on ESPNW. And those other five have already advanced to the Super Regionals next week, so they can blog some more. ESPNW.com. Terrific content throughout this tournament. The likes of Graham Hayes and the front row with Holly Rowe. All kinds of terrific softball coverage. And uh, yeah, Alex has plenty to dance about. I'm not sure about the twerking, but you know. Up the middle for Freeman. Tell right now, Haley Wagner throwing a lot more over the middle of the plate, and I think Carol Hutchins recognizing that she calls timeout. Talk to her pitcher. Spiel will come on to run. Freeman can re-enter, and you can see how pumped up her teammates are. That Amber Freeman was able to come through with a base hit. And to be honest, Beth, Freeman's demeanor the last four or five at bats as she's come back after an out has just been clearly frustrated. The sagging of the sh shoulders, the long jog, the non-hustle. You can tell that she needed this hit. The team feeding off of it. There is nobody in the bullpen for Michigan. It is Wagner right now against Haley Steele. We've talked about these two, three, and four hitters needing to come alive. Well, so far, in the first three innings, Coyle has walked and scored, and Freeman and Steele both have base hits. Trying to build off of the Alex Johnson home run, the first for Johnson since April 6th. Tied it up.
little late. We haven't seen Sparky yet today. Side, another line foul. This is where that Wagner changeup, off speed curve would come very handy. So you see these Arizona State bats starting to sit on specific pitches, get barrel on them, figure out a way to keep them off balance. Too high. Starting to turn into a situation where who can wear down the other pitcher more quickly? And which pitcher can fight off the fatigue better? Escobedo already over 300 pitches. Wagner approaching it for the weekend. Here's the eighth pitch of this at bat. Another foul ball. You can tell Haley's still feeling more comfortable at the plate. Before that would have been a strikeout for her. She broke through her slump with a single on a changeup, her last at bat. Right now, she's able to see and recognize every pitch, battle it off. Tenth pitch coming. Taking a pitch right over the meat of the plate. And she just crushes it. She's been struggling for weeks. Even earlier this game, unable to adjust to Wagner. And she comes in with a different approach and a different result. Well, the two, three, four hitters have responded to the challenge. They hit a buck 25 through the first three games. And tonight, three for five with a home run and three runs scored as Caparuccio grounds out two down. Coyle, Freeman, and Steele coming alive. Toss in Alex Johnson with the leadoff home run to start out this three-run third inning. Single for Kemp. And now there is activity in the bullpen. Sarah Driesinga. Dallas 0 for 1, grounded out to first. <laughs> Looks at a strike one and one. Escobedo's got to be feeling a little better. Oh. 
Kill third misses, two and one. Michigan was down a couple runs in the first game tonight. They rallied to win it, and now they're down a couple again. Three complete. We'll talk with Craig Nicholson when we come back. Perhaps he'll share his thoughts with us about the bats waking up here in the third inning. Alex Johnson solo. Haley Steele with a run. Back here in Tempe, an elimination game. The winner moving on to the Super Regionals in Tallahassee as we head to the top of the fourth. Craig Nicholson, the head coach for the Sun Devils with us. And Craig, what was your message to the team there between games? You lost a tough one uh, earlier, and now you got to come right back. Well, I just told them, you know, this is why you come to school at a place like this to play in big games. And, you know, so the fact that we lost one big game, we got another opportunity to go out and enjoy the moment and play the big game. Well, Craig, I had talked to you before the regional about your one through four hitters just not being as successful as they normally are. And today, just a breakout game, what's been the difference? I mean, they're, they're doing a nice job staying disciplined. Haley Steele had a great at bat there. I mean, fouled off some tough pitches and then finally got one to hit. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're continuing to make adjustments. They're continuing to work. They're continuing to believe in themselves. And, uh, you know, they, they just uh, that just paid off for them in the last inning. Hopefully they can keep doing that, you know. All right, thank you, Craig. Thanks, guys. Head coach of the Sun Devils. Uh, they pick up three runs in the third inning. Alex Johnson, a solo home run. And then Haley Steele with a two-run shot. And Dallas Escobedo has a two-run lead to work with. Wolverines scored both of their runs on walks with the bases loaded in the first inning. Escobedo has struck out three. This is Abby Ramirez. And then the top of the order, Ramirez singled in the second. and I think hit Willie Newman in the mask. Everybody seems to be okay. Escobedo, 70 pitches through the first three innings. And those two walks costly in that first inning. Ramirez pops it up and into shallow left. Caparucio one down. Well, we've got some college baseball coming your way next Saturday night. It's the West Coast Conference Championship, Saturday at 10 Eastern on ESPNU. We've got our softball super regional coverage beginning on Thursday. Two teams at one site. They play best two out of three. And the winner advances to the Women's College World Series, which begins May 29th. Tennessee at Oklahoma, Washington at Florida, Kentucky at UCLA, Nebraska at Alabama, and Minnesota at Oregon. Ones that are set. We know Louisiana and Florida State will both be hosting next weekend. They are awaiting opponents. Florida State gets our winner here. So we've got, what, Kentucky at UCLA, Washington at Florida were set up with a couple of Pac-12 SEC showdowns, and we've got a rematch of last year's championship series with Tennessee and Oklahoma. Arizona State is cruising over LSU right now. Looks like they may be advancing. Or excuse me, Arizona. Down in Tucson, they're up 11-3 in the fifth. Doyle. Out to Johnson, and that's off the wall. And Lindsey Doyle, a long single as that got to the fence in a hurry. And now the tying run to the plate for Michigan. Doyle, you'd see Alex Johnson playing her in, has to travel so far just off the wall. Of course, Johnson getting the ball right back in. It's a long single. Sapping Fingal, a high chopper. Hey! Beat it. 
And actually, Kemp got pulled off the bag. So two on, the tying run on board, and the go-ahead is Sierra Romero coming up. Struck out on a rise ball and grounded to short. A terrific play by Coyle. And Michigan trying to rally as Craig Nicholson argues the call. And I think Beth, she was safe either way. Play very close. You see the throw going up the line and Kemp comes off the bag to catch it. Oh, that was close. The ball in the glove looked like it got there first, but hard to tell if the toes were off. And that's with slow-mo. <laughs> From slow-mo to Romo versus Esco. Fouled off 0-1. Escobedo has won the first two face-offs tonight. Romo got her for a home run earlier. Given Romo a good mix of pitches, rise balls, curve balls, and occasional screwball inside. Right to Steele, steps on the back, fires the first, double play! From the two run home run to the DP. And a heck of an inning for Haley Steele. Carol Hutchins coming up for Michigan. Her Wolverines are down two as Romero is retired with the glove work of Steele and the throw. Four to two, Arizona State with the lead over Michigan as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Carol Hutchins now joining us down on the field on the Michigan side. And Carol, it's been a long day for everybody. What, what's the key for you guys to keep that energy and enthusiasm up? You're out hitting Arizona State right now, but not up on the board. You know what? We just we've got to swing. We've just got to keep swinging. We've got to keep swinging. Our defense needs to keep us in this and give us a chance. But uh, we got to swing it. We've hit the ball well, and we just got to keep doing it. All right. Thank you very much, Carol. She continues to go with Haley Wagner out there in the circle. And uh, they're starting shortstop, Sierra Romero, late to get out of the dugout. She and Nicole Sappingfield have been sick all day. And she catches her breath, uh, wipes herself off, gets a cup of water, and will trot out to short. She is 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position tonight, but a couple of those were rockets right at the fenders, including to Haley Steele to turn the double play there at the end of the top of the fourth. And the heat has definitely affected this Michigan team, and Carol Hutchins said that before the game, that Sierra Romero has been feeling ill throughout the week. Nicole Sappingfield, but a lot of it has to do with the temperature. Lined right to Ramirez, one down. Nikki Girard retired. 8, 9, and 1 here, still at 100 degrees. And that's what the Even sun going Even though it's uh, 635 local. And it's been 109, 110 for the last three days. And for I think a lot of these Michigan players not used to that kind of weather. And that is the 300th pitch of the weekend for Wagner.
Wigness 0 for 1, struck out on a curveball in the second inning. A run in the first, three more in the third off of two home runs. After Michigan had taken a 2-0 lead in the first. the softball version of the shift that you see a lot in baseball, the softball version for the slappers where the outfielders, center field specifically coming over to left field, the infield pulled in. That 60 feet speed of ba Bailey Wigness. And the fact that she doesn't threaten them with any power. You're not gonna see her hit the ball over the fence. Well, she has a really nice gap right center, if she could get around on something, it'd probably be a triple. To short, Romero. Got her. Two down. And here comes the woman that started the rally in the last inning, Alex Johnson, with the leadoff home run. So versatile bat, her first at bat, she laid down a drag bunt. Her next at bat, she hits one over the fence, and that's just a little key of how athletic Alex Johnson can be. Oh. Not to mention that she roams center field and robs home runs and makes diving catches. Usually your outfielders are gonna be some of your best athletes. That's how it works. That's generally the rule of thumb. Yeah. Jessica Mendoza rules. <laughs> Laura Berg, actually. Laura Berg rules. Outfielders rule is how that would go. Winner of this one at Tallahassee, they'd have to deal with Lacey Waldrop and Matty O'Brien, a couple of National Player of the Year candidates. Seminoles have advanced. Huh. Right now we're looking at the possibility of three games of Waldrop versus Escobedo. Ooh. Got a pack of lunch for those games. She might be there for a while. <laughs> As was the case of the Sarah Nevins Waldrop matchup. A lot of offense from both teams, too. Maddie O'Brien of Florida State. Yeah. Alex Johnson and the crew of oh. Arizona State. Johnson walks with two down. Well, Dallas Escobedo and Alabama's Jacqueline Trano, your only active players that have pitched in and won a national championship game. They have the blueprint. Trano picked up a couple of wins in the regional, hit a home run as well. Tide will be home to Nebraska at the Rhodes House next weekend. UCLA is making a push. They will be hosting Kentucky. Kentucky's never been to the World Series, and for UCLA, with 11 national championships, their seniors have never been to Oklahoma City. So a lot on the line for those two. And of course, in Norman, Oklahoma next weekend, the two teams that played for the national championship a year ago. Ellen Renfro is back with Tennessee. Taking on the Sooners, Kelsey Stevens, their ace this year after the graduations of Kaylani Ricketts and Michelle Gascoigne. Coyle popped it up. Dad Robert. Sitting down earlier, he's on his feet, maybe expecting a little something special right here. And instead, it's the defensive play of Montemarano. The walk one left on. Four innings in the books and a 4-2 ASU lead. 4-2 ASU over Michigan. Next weekend, the Super Regionals, and hey, we've got some nights and times for you. UCLA and Kentucky, 
They'll get underway Saturday night out in Westwood. Arizona looks uh, like they are going to advance. They're winning big over LSU. They would be at Lafayette Friday night. The national championship rematch would be Friday night in Norman. And the Roads House hosting Nebraska primetime on ESPN Thursday night. That is half of your super regional lineup. Winners advance to the Women's College World Series on May 29th. We will have every pitch for you from Oklahoma City. And congratulations to the Arizona Wildcats. They hit three home runs tonight in their if necessary game. And that just went final. Arizona, a winner over LSU. So it will be Arizona at Louisiana, the 11th seed at the 6th seed next weekend. LSU did not make their Sunday easy. Just like Michigan right now, putting up some fight against the Sun Devils. And that was Carol Hutchins' biggest message. They had mechanical stuff, ways to approach Escobedo, all the coaching stuff. At the end of her speech, it was about the fight that she wants to see from these Wolverines. Nice change up from Escobedo. Also in Athens, they've just gone final. Georgia beating NC State to force another if necessary. Seven if necessary matchups today. That's almost half of the regionals. Had to play twice. Including us. Michigan winning 4-3 this afternoon, and now ASU up 4-2 tonight. Blanchard reaches, and a strikeout for Escobedo. Number four for Dallas. Escobedo just doing a nice job of baiting the bat of Blanchard using that screwball. We've seen Michigan be aggressive, but They've also found success early against Escobedo on being patient on those type of pitches. But as these innings start to unfold, as we get later in the game, you're gonna see that anxiety peak up in a lot of these Michigan hitters. Sierra Lawrence in the five spot. If Dallas continue to, can continue to send people back to the dugout, you're looking at just one more go round for the top of the order. And that may not come until the top of the seventh inning, depending on whether or not the Wolverines can get something going. And Lawrence does just that. Sierra Lawrence, her second home run of the regional. And it's a one run game. of the day that Michigan has hit off of Escobedo. Escobedo throws this pitch down the middle of the plate. Lawrence just jumps all over it. Michigan not letting up. Taylor Hasselbeck. And that home run could be very significant, not just for tightening up this ball game, but look at Escobedo's records with and without giving up a gopher ball. 59 and one in her career when she has not given up the long ball. And now Michigan's got one. Sweet, a walk that forced in a run in the first and a single in the third.
and one to sweep. Steele tracking it and has it. Two down. fly out to center and then her pinch hitter Christner also with a fly out to center in the third inning. Runner goes, the throw down to second, not in time to get Hasselback. So she gets herself in scoring position with the tying run out at second base. Now it's up to Montemarano. Fifth straight inning with a runner in scoring position for Michigan. And the runner left early. Or are they calling the check swing? I thought Nicholson was arguing whether the runner left but instead it's the Montemarano check swing, one and one. Michigan one for eight with a runner in scoring position. Two and two. they were arguing Montemarano very, very late. She was supposed to protect the runner who was stealing, and that's what Willie Newman had originally missed behind the plate that Craig Nicholson got called. 2-2. Two -two. Popped up. Escobedo wants it, and she's got it in the circle. Michigan draws closer. It's a one-run game on the Sierra Lawrence solo home run. Well, thanks, Dari. Well, here is a look at the other four Super Regionals that are almost set for next weekend. Minnesota will be at Oregon Saturday night and Sunday. Florida State will host the winner of our matchup here. That'll get underway on Thursday night. Washington will be at Florida Saturday afternoon on ESPNU. And Georgia and NC State are still in progress. If NC State beats Georgia, then the Wolfpack will go to Baylor to play on Friday afternoon. If Georgia wins the if necessary game, then Baylor would be heading to Athens. As we are almost down to 16 teams. And then next weekend, the Supers are best two out of three the winners to the World Series, which starts on May 29th. Three, four, and five here for Arizona State with a one-run lead in the bottom of the fifth. Winner here will rack up some frequent flyer miles on the road down to Tallahassee to face the Knowles. Freeman singled and scored, her pinch runner did, on the two-run home run from Haley Steele. <laughs> College softball, you can be lifted once and re-enter. If you are lifted twice from the lineup, you're burnt. Well, Beth, the reaction of the dugout when Freeman did get a single, her last at bat, I mean, they just ignited in the energy from the dugout from that, you can tell just the leadership that she has and how down she was. I've been watching her mannerism, her body language, because she has been struggling. And that base hit, you could just feel the weight being lifted off of her shoulders and the team's reaction to that. It's amazing how much one player can make a difference. Wagner backhands it. 
one down. Haley Steele's hit, stands as the game winner right now, the two run home run in the third inning. Also singled in the first. A hard shot, but right at Romero, two down. Sierra may be able to pick up a bat in the top of the sixth. She would be due up fourth. Sapping field has it. Three up and three down. Quick work for Wagner in Michigan. Ready to rock and get back to work. They need to pick up a run or they're headed home. Four to three, Arizona State with the lead over Michigan. As we head to the sixth inning, it's win or go home for the Wolverines and the Sun Devils. The winner will head off to Tallahassee for the Super Regionals next weekend. Beth Mowens along with Jessica Mendoza and uh, if nothing else, just uh, an unbelievable performance by these two pitchers trying to get their team through to the Supers and tough it out. They have been pitching all weekend long, Haley Wagner and Dallas Escobedo. They have, and you've seen the offense go back and forth, back and forth, and I think you give a huge credit to Escobedo and Wagner because of how many times they've had to face these lineups, and they've had to be creative. They've had to mix their pitches, and you can tell they're tired, but there's so much fight in both of them. It's Dallas Escobedo's turn out there. If she can get six outs, she continues her career for at least one more week. Nine, one, and two coming around for the Maize and Blue. And it will be very interesting to see whether it is this inning or next. If it's a one run game, do you throw to Romero who could tie it with one swing? That's the million dollar question, Beth. Mm -hmm. Going to the minds of Craig Nicholson, I'm sure. Ramirez. And another strikeout for Escobedo, one down. Fifth strikeout for Dallas. This is Lindsey Doyle. A couple of singles and a ground out for Lindsey tonight. Ball to Caparucio, two down. That'll bring up Nicole Sappingfield. situation right now for Michigan is where is their on deck hitter that would be the sick Sierra Romero who is not out of the dugout and in fact not within eyesight of our camera crew <laughs> trying to fight through a cold there's some activity over in the corner and a With two outs, will she even come up this inning? She would certainly have to return to short. And not just a cold best, but I mean, she's been sick. She's been throwing up all morning. She's had a tough time with the heat. We've seen her with a towel on her head. And she's up next. She is a California native from Southern California. She is not up in the 
on deck circle. And the strike to Sappingfield, two and two. And here she comes. 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position each time she has come up tonight. 2-2, Two -two. Sappingfield, a high chopper to Coyle, and Romero will get a chance with a runner on base. Sappingfield with her third hit of the day, so she and Doyle have been on base five times in those top two spots. And they've scored two of the three runs. So now, do you pitch to her with the possibility that Romero could put you down a run with one swing? Escobedo gets the strike on the outside corner. A strikeout, a ground out, and she hit into a double play in this game, but in the first meeting this afternoon, she hit a home run. Escobedo being careful. I'm guessing that may be covering the IV mark. She's had to take fluids, that wrap on her arm. Impressive stat, 40 straight games that she's reached base. 0 for 3 tonight. Not her usual self, especially as a 500 hitter. Talk to her dad, Michael, right there. And he said, you know what, I'm always worried about the other team when she hasn't gotten a hit. 1-2 pitch. Struck her out, Escobedo with the K of Romero. With the game tying run on base. And Escobedo gets Romo four times in the ball game. A one run ASU lead. Haley steals two run home run. The difference right now in a one run ball game, the road to the Women's College World Series shaping up like this. These are four of the eight super regionals. Minnesota at Oregon Saturday night. Florida State will lead things off Thursday night at seven Eastern against either ASU or Michigan. Washington will be down in Gainesville Saturday afternoon. And Georgia or NC State will face Baylor. If NC State wins, that Super Regional will be in Waco, Texas. If Georgia beats NC State, that Super Regional will be in Athens, Georgia. They are just underway in their game scoreless. Those are the only two spots left. 14 of the 16 are in the books. And some big names surviving and advancing. Nebraska is the only unseeded team thus far. They will be at Alabama. You've got 11-time national champion UCLA. You've got eight-time national champion Arizona. The defending champs, Oklahoma. All still alive. With a strong SEC Pac-12 flavor. ASU wins this, they will have half the field just from those two conferences. Well, what's surprising this year is that there isn't any conference matchups in Super Regionals. Obviously, if Missouri had beat Nebraska, you would have seen them match up against Alabama. But lucky for a lot of the conferences, the last thing they want to do is face each other in the postseason. They'd like to wait for the World Series. Alabama has already advanced, as has Arizona. The Tide, the only team that has played in all 10 Super Regionals. And Michigan and Arizona State, one of the winner here will join Arizona nine of 10 years. Washington also advancing for the eighth time. It's been 10 seasons of Super Regionals and 10 seasons of a best two of three championship series at the World Series. Sappingfield has it. 
Michigan beat UCLA in 2005 in the very first championship series. And speaking of that Women's College World Series, it'll be in Oklahoma City starting on Thursday, May 29th at noon Eastern. We'll play four games that day. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. The ESPN networks will have every pitch for you for the Super Regionals next weekend and from Oklahoma City where we have crowned five different national champions in the last five years. And over the last six years, what may stand out for you is Arizona State is the only team with two, 2008 and 2011. It has been three years since the last Pac-12 title. If the conference does not get one this year, that would be the longest drought or the most dominant conference in tournament history. Let's see, I think they lost for the first time today, right? Arizona lost, but then they came back to win. And Arizona State lost and now trying to come back to win. Romero over to first. Side retired, so here we go. Last chance for Michigan to stay alive. Otherwise, Arizona State is moving on. We're here in Tempe, Arizona. We've had to play two today. Michigan winning the first game to force this if necessary. And now Arizona State with the lead as we take a look at our Capital One Cup impact performance. And it's the two run home run from Haley Steele. Haley Steele just breaking out of a slump that she was in. Not only the two run home run that's responsible for two of the four runs that have been scored, but she's had two hits tonight. Breaking through, seeing the ball well, and that home run at bat. You think about it, 10 pitches that she worked Wagner to get to that final one. In for a strike to Caitlin Blanchard. Four, five, and six here for Michigan, the last chance. against Dallas Escobedo looking for her 20th career postseason win. She's thrown every pitch here at the regional for ASU. Looking for her 116th win, which would put her too shy of Katie Burkhardt's school record. Coyle, the backhand, the throw, one down. Knuckles for dad. I don't think he sat down since the second inning. Now it's Sierra Lawrence, a strikeout and then a single and a home run in the fifth inning. Lawrence sends one deep, back to the wall, and Sierra Lawrence ties it up with her second solo home run. at Farrington Stadium. Sierra Lawrence just crushing a little rise ball on the inner half of the plate. And this was not only far, but it was high. She crushed that Escobedo pitch. And look at the reacts as Lawrence runs around the bases and Escobedo wanting that pitch back. Two outs away from the Super Regionals. Hugs all around for the maize and blue. And you won't get a much prettier reaction than that one from Sierra Lawrence as she rounded first base. <laughs> Dad's trying to catch his breath. This 
spoke to Jennifer Brundage, one of the assistant coaches for Michigan, coming into this regional, and she said, you know what, Jess, we can talk all day about Sierra Romero, about Caitlin Blanchard behind her, but Sierra Lawrence is our key to a super regional. We need her bat to get hot. And talk about timing. And there's a deep fly ball, and that is gone, and Michigan takes the lead. in the country. And this is where Escobedo is so susceptible to the home run. Her low rise ball is in home run territory all the way because it's up, it's hard, and Hasselback crushes. Look at the reaction to this dugout. The outfielders didn't even bother moving. And how about the perseverance of these Wolverines? Lauren Sweet fouls it out of play. Now you're looking at taking a lead into the bottom of the seventh against the nine hitter and then the top of the order for ASU. Check swing back to Escobedo. Those, by the way, aren't just any three hitters. Those are three seniors that are due up for Arizona State. Will they be down just one? This is Mana Murano. or not, it's hard to tell from that angle, but it looks like, if anything, it got her back knee. What a stunning turn of events here in the top of the seventh inning. Lawrence and Hasselback back-to-back -back home runs off of Dallas Escobedo. Lawrence never hitting two home runs in one game in her career. That is the fifth Wolverine home run in the two games today against ASU. Lawrence with a pair of them, Hasselback with a home run. And in the first game today, Romero and Blanchard went yard. been that kind of game all around. Haley Steele and Alex Johnson on the flip side for Arizona State. That's how they've got the bulk of their runs is the long ball. And that's who's coming up in the bottom half. So now it turns to the Sun Devils. Will the seniors be taking their final swings? Michigan scores a pair in the top of the seventh. And they could just walk around the bases. Lawrence and Hasselback and the Maize and Blue are three outs away from a miracle finish.
Here's how the Super Regionals are starting to shape up on the road to the Women's College World Series. Oregon, Minnesota on Saturday. Florida State gets the winner of this one on Thursday. Washington will be in Gainesville Saturday. And on Friday afternoon, it will either be Georgia hosting Baylor or NC State at Baylor. Down to their final two outs and both swinging at their very first pitch they saw. Sierra Lawrence and Taylor Hasselback back-to-back -back home runs to take the lead. And now it's in the hands of Lindsey Wagner. The senior Bailey Wigness followed by classmates Alex Johnson and Cheyenne Coyle. Johnson has a home run already in the game. Wigness is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Mana Morano, one down. And here comes the top of the order for an Arizona State team that over the last year, eight years, they've been to every Super Regional. They won two national championships under their former head coach, Clint Myers, and now first year helmsman Craig Nicholson needs something to happen to keep that streak alive. No doubt with that Alex Johnson swing, what she was trying to do with that pitch. Looking for Haley Wagner's curveball, which she's been getting a steady diet of all game. She took her hat. Hit a solo home run in the third off of Wagner. Has also walked and grounded out. One and two. On a regional Sunday where we've seen seven, if necessary, games, we've seen three walk-off winners. And we're not done yet. Romero, she'll have to hurry. Fires diving in safely at first is Johnson. Tied run on board and the game winner coming to the plate. Romero sits back just a little bit on this, gets rid of it, throws it in the dirt, bobbled by Blanchard at first. Johnson may have been there anyway in the effort, although it doesn't make you faster, but it definitely will make a dugout explode when you dive to first to get on base. Senior Cheyenne Coyle. Third ball coming in at her, 1-0. and oh. Walked and scored in the first. And then has kept Montemarano busy at third base twice. One and one. Coyle does have a walk-off home run this year back in March against Stanford. Two and one. Coyle popped it up, Mono Morano. And the Wolverines are one out away. Down to their last two outs in the top of the inning. Back to back home runs to grab the lead. And now it's up to Amber Freeman. One for three tonight. A 
stunning comeback for the Wolverines with a two-run seventh inning and a world-class catch in deep center field at the wall by Lindsey Doyle. And disbelief for the Sun Devils, they lose twice at home. Look at Lindsey Doyle, the jump, this ball is crushed. She runs back in the jump against the wall. <laughs> Carol Hutchins has seen a lot in her 30 years, and even this, a stunning development for her. Hail to the victors indeed, and disbelief for the Sun Devils. Some brilliant careers coming to a close for those seniors, Wigness and Escobedo, Coyle and Johnson and Mackenzie Papascu. They won a national championship at freshman, denied the opportunity as seniors. As the Wolverines move on and will head to Tallahassee. Super Regionals coming your way this weekend. Minnesota at Oregon on Saturday night. Michigan at Florida State on Thursday. Washington at Florida on Saturday. And it will be either NC State at Baylor or Baylor at Georgia on Friday. That game is still in progress. And then the other four Super Regionals Kentucky at UCLA on Saturday, Arizona at Lafayette on Friday night, Tennessee at Oklahoma in a championship rematch from a year ago. That'll be on Friday night. And on Thursday primetime, Nebraska at the Rhodes House in Alabama. An amazing career for Dallas Escobedo. And it comes to a close tonight at Farrington Stadium. And a stunning comeback for the Michigan Wolverines. Coming up next, the 2014 Draft Academy. And a reminder, our Super Regional coverage begins Thursday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For Jessica Mendoza and our entire crew, I'm Beth Moens. Thanks so much for joining us for the mayhem of Regional Weekend on the road to the Women's College World Series. <laughs>